We're gonna sing, baby Pete. Mommy gonna sing. Beautiful plants, wake unto me. Succulents and sun drops are waiting for thee. Only the best plants are all here today. These were all free and gifted to me. Beautiful succulents, it's not all you see. <laughs> Pedro's like, hey, there you go. Play with your bell. It's after his bell. Oopsie. I'm trying to dodge the budgie here around my feet. Pedro, you're right in the middle there. But anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to my gifted plant haul. So most of these plants that you see here today, I did not buy. Well, technically, I did not buy them. So let's go have a look. Hello there, my name is Liz, a self-confessed succulent addict. Welcome to my channel, Growing Succulents. This is part of my plant haul from last Christmas. But I just want to show this to you that it's flowering and it's just gorgeous. It's Tacitus bellus, Graptopetalum bellum. Beautiful flowers, look at that, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous peat flowers. So if you want, well, this succulent is, Pedro, you're so noisy. I'm waiting all year for this plant to flower because it only flowers in around December. It's already January now and it's a bit late. So this year, it's still good because we can enjoy it much longer. Isn't that beautiful? I got a couple outside as well that's also flowering. So anyway, Tacitus bellus, and if you haven't got it in your arsenal, it's highly recommended. So I'll just put this out of the way. While we're in the tune of flower, I'm just laughing because I just noticed I got bird poop on my shoulder. It's lucky. Bird poop is lucky. But anyway, this is a rosy, a Tilotus manglesii, or otherwise known as mala mala plant. Rose tip mala mala, isn't that gorgeous? When we used to go to prospecting, because I'm not going to mention the name just in case someone goes there and starts digging up all the plants. I saw this plant out in the bush while we're detecting for gold. And I have always wanted to get one, but of course you're not allowed to take plants in the wild unless you have a permit. So I was hoping that I would find it here in civilization. And finally, it did come. So this one is hardy to our zone 9 area here, but it's just beautiful. And this one is actually a darker tone. The one I saw in the bush is a lighter sort of pink, but still nevertheless, it's a beautiful plant. But I think uh, this one can also grow from seeds. So I'm looking forward to growing the seeds for this one. So I just put that there. So it's Tilotus manglesii, otherwise known as rose tip mala mala. It's a mala mala plant. So I'll get it out of the way. So basically this plant hall is a combination of indoor plants, outdoor plants, and of course succulents. Now the next one, just to get it out of the way here so I can have a clear view of what's going on. I always uh, wanted to get Chlorophytum. This is like produces a lot of oxygen. Apparently, <laughs> you need a whole rainforest in here to be able to <laughs> chlorophyte them. There you go. <laughs> to be able to extract enough oxygen to supply even two people in this household. So chlorophyte green. I have a variegated one which Pedro loves to chew on. So I've been rotating my variegated ones so he can sit there and have his bath and also play in it. So that's his bird bath plant so now this one is chloropythum this is the only one i've got it's flowering at the moment and if this is an old-fashioned favorite that's why i'm singing old-fashioned songs because most of these plants are like old-fashioned with the exception of a couple maybe but anyway i'll put that away so and it's look a bargain for 13 dollars by the way, these plants, I said, they were all gifted to me. So I, I did not buy most of this plant, except maybe one and a half plant. 
so there's one plant there later on I'll show you which one that is and another one I have to redeem a voucher because where we buy our plants you get a voucher every time you purchase something so that it's just something to draw you back in anyway this one is four dollars from my local thrift thrift store okay my tongue is all twisted up today so this is my local thrift store it's got a little owl hanging so I can either leave it as is with no holes or I can just drill a hole and remove the rope that it's being hanged on so but anyway that'd be cute actually in the garden isn't it <laughs> little owl pot now this one is clearance for a dollar it says no plant so this is uh, January at my local hardware store one dollar for this pot, no hole, but you can also always drill a hole in it, so it's not a problem. So again, that's a bargain. Also now, what's the next one? The I've got a couple of carnivorous plants, and I don't know why it was gotten into me, but so I went and bought a couple of more. I bought three more. So, or should I say, I've got gifted. <laughs> three more and so this one is actually a voucher so half because I've got a voucher for like eight dollars and this one is fourteen dollars so it's still not bad so I said to my husband I just have to go back to uh, green gold nursery just so I can redeem my voucher before it expires so uh, nepenthe pitcher is that how you say it nepenthe a plant so apparently they grow quite big so one of those look at that Ooh, beautiful plant I don't want to trigger it so there's still actually there's one growing or two growing little heads little pitcher ones coming out but anyway I've been keeping it wet so I've been putting water in the bottom so it's all moistured whatever and because of those two carnivorous plants I've got earlier for Christmas I got inspired to buy more because apparently these ones are frost hardy so I can leave them outside provided you have a certain amount of covering so as to protect them a little bit from the frost so maybe they can take minus four I don't know if they're gonna take uh, the frost that we have here because the severity of the frost varies from year to year here in Canberra Australia so this is a fly and wasp eater and it's called Saracenia species. Both of them are Saracenia species. And this one, I've got a freebie. I asked the lady, I was holding these two plants on my hand and I asked her, I said, what's the difference between these two? Because like one is tall, look if you can see. So one of them is tall and the other one is short. And then straight away she said to me, oh, you're getting a free plant <laughs> because there's a sun dew there. So you're technically buying two plants in one. So I said, oh, that's great. I just want to know what's the difference in the two. But anyway, this one is about to flower as well. The sun, you look at that. And it looks like it's going to have some pink flowers. So, okay. I'm sorry, but my budgie wouldn't stop talking. Hey, Pedro, can you shut up, please? Anyway, this one now. See, I stopped talking, he stops talking. I know, I know, yeah, no, Pedro. So this is Monstera Adansonii. I have an Adansonii. And I only got this one because I thought I lost my Adansonii because it got attacked by fungus gnats last year. And I took it outside in winter, by the way, in winter. And I only remembered to bring it inside again, or I saw it, and I brought it inside in springtime because it started growing so I was already thinking that it should have died but it did not die so can you believe that so this year I'm going to do some experimentation and see if this can actually survive in my covered area with the frost I'm terrible ain't I but it would be good if it does because it'd be good outside because the leaves are quite thick and maybe after I put it through the ringer or give it a hard time then maybe it will variegate. Then I can have like a four thousand dollar plant. Just kidding. Anyway, it's ridiculous the amount, the prices of plants that are for sale nowadays, just because they're rare. <laughs> now this one is a syngonium, and I only got it because I already have a syngonium Maria. And I said to myself when I got it's only five forty nine. 
What's the difference? One is darker than the other. So if you were to choose which one you're going to get, which one are you going to get? Probably I would get the darker one. But then again, this lighter one's got nicer pattern. So how do you actually decide which plant you're going to get if you're only limited to say there's 10 plants and you're only allowed to get one or two? How do you decide if they're all the same? See, that's my problem. So and if I can't decide, I'll just take the lot. So this one came with no name. So it's probably some sort of, hang on, I googled it up. It's called Nidularium, or is that Nidularium? I don't know. But anyway, it's like a bromeliad family. And I just love the serrated edge. So I don't know if this is going to survive the frost, but I will find out. So this one's I'm going to put in the garden because of the green texture. I, I don't know, it's textural. And speaking of textural, I got a similar plant, but that's actually for outside. And I've been wanting this plant for a very, very, very long time and couldn't find it because they're ideal as cut flowers. The first time I saw this plant, I saw it in a book and it's called... A sea holly, I think it's one of those um, plant books where you buy it because it's got all these different plants. This is a couple of decades ago when I was doing my garden in my other house before. And this is ideal as a cut flowers because the flower is just so gorgeous. I mean, it's not really, okay, hang on. So this is sea holly. Eryngium agavifolium, otherwise known as it is sea holly. Sea holly. So, a robust and attractive sea holly with small silver green cone flowers with spiky metallic bracts held over attractive leafy green tooth rosette foliage clumped to 150 centimeters high. So this is beautiful in the garden. Look at that. Also, dry cut flower arrangement. So if you're into that, which I am, it's just gorgeous. And they're like in long stems. So when you do put it in flower arrangement, it's just absolutely beautiful. And look at the tooth leaves. It's actually quite sort of, first you think, oh, that's a bit sharp, but it's not. See, but I think here, no, it's quite soft. It bends. It's bendable, bendable spikes. So this is for the garden. So I've got two plants for the garden. The rest is for actually three because I'm experimenting on the other bromeliads there. Now, the next plant, Peperomia Hope. Oh, this is $34.95. I didn't even blink when I saw this one. Isn't it gorgeous? It's like really, really round. Beautiful. And it's also succulent. So this is one of those Peperomias that actually prefers water. So there's some Peperomias that doesn't like to be watered. And this one prefers to be wet 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 and I uh, love 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 look how thick and round beautiful look at that beautiful it's almost like those silver dollar plant only better because I killed my silver dollar plant now these ones are Calathea so one is Calathea illustris and I think they changed the name to Jupertia look at the leaves isn't that gorgeous it's like a peacock flower. Beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? So gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And it was on special for $10 as well. So I got more bang for my buck. So I saved $3. <laughs> but the leaves are all sort of dried up already. The tips, a couple of them. But anyway, I'll just chop that off and regrow it. So even that one is a bit dry. But still, for 10 bucks, you can't go wrong. So, when there's a special, that's what I'm looking for all the time. I don't just buy, and if it's really expensive, I wait a little bit, and then I can get it cheaper. This one is not a special, Calathea Makoyama. Sometimes, you love a plant so much that you're going to buy it 10 times over. Not 10 times, only twice. I have already a Makoyama. I forgot that I have a Makoyama because my Makoyama is darker than this one. The leaves is like this one here. And what threw me off is this leaf here, it's pink. So I thought to myself, oh, it's going pink. And my Makoyama is mainly green and white. So maybe it's a different one. And then I come home and look up the name, it's a Makoyama. So 
Kalatia, Makoyana, or Makoyana, Makoyama, Makoyana, or I think it's now Jupertia, Makoyana. Why do they have to keep changing the names? It's just, it's confusing enough as is, and then they have to keep changing it. So anyway, I'll put that one away, and the next one on the list is Apollonia Repens. Now this plant, this is the second one I, bo I bought or I got. First one of this that I got, it grew really long. And I thought it's frost hardy. I don't know, something in my brain just did not click right at the time and I left it. And when I came back, of course, it got frozen and dead. And so I thought I'm gonna give it another try. So it's commonly called the trailing watermelon plant. This species is, is a creeper that can be used for indoor gardens, basket, or as a ground cover in warmer climate. So it doesn't like the cold. So you have to keep this one somewhere a bit warm. But this one, I'm going to grow this as like a trailing climbing plant. So I need to organize a pole for this one to climb it. I think that's what it does. They are moderately fast growing. It can be kept small and compact for long periods. We don't want small and compact. We want it big and lush. This Pelonia will tolerate some cold, but will not grow outdoors in southern climates. And we are in the southern climate, so have to keep it inside. And 20 degrees C growth will be extremely slow. So long periods below 10 C will kill this plant. So that's what happened to this plant before. So anyway, I'm gonna give it one more try. Pedro's talking. <laughs> I can't help it. If I have to wait for him to stop talking, I will never ever do this video because he just talks non-stop. Anyway, this one is an Echeveria species of unknown. And it's this is I think nine dollars, eight ninety-eight. This plant it costs and look. So I like all those spikes. Maybe it's a blue spur, but blue spur also has caranculation so I'm just hoping that this plant will grow as a caranculated plant one day it's quite beautiful I don't know I don't know why I like weird plants but I just love them I can't help it this is only four dollars fifty that is expensive for four dollars fifty and it started rotting when I got it home uh, two days later it's gone soft so it's drying up so that's why I soak it with water overnight and look I'm ready <laughs> <laughs> losing the leaves but cases like this if the plant sort of does that normally some people what they do they take it back and then you get your money back but I'm just after this one because I was thinking that it might variegate I think it's gonna die on me before it does that see but it is some form or maybe sedum maybe it's an echeveria or I don't know sedivaria something like that maybe but anyway I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this thing doesn't die on me now next one is this one, Ewal Dayana. This one also is Ripsalis. I haven't got this plant, so for $4.50, why not? Really, so again, it's a gorgeous plant. It's like a mini cactus, so I'm sure that's not gonna stay like that all the time, it's gonna grow. And I've got an Alo Longista, Longistyla. See, long, I call it Longista. I kept shortening things and then I get confused. So this is $5.99. So this is a bargain for this plant. So Alo Longistyla, and they have beautiful flowers. And this one's gonna go in the garden and it's quite frost hardy. So I have one and of course I need three because I like odd numbers. I don't like even numbers. So I got two of them and actually, they kind of look different, didn't it? The, that one is sort of flat, like a fan aloe. And this one is more like normal, circular. So anyway, this one now, I only ever had one Pachypytum diamond. And that Pachypytum diamond is about four years old or something like that. So when I saw this one with all those ridges, again, with the weird plants department, <laughs> just in case it variegates, who knows? See, so that's why for six dollars, I mean, why not? You know, that's like a cup of coffee. But then again, I'll have another strain of Pachypytum diamond. So that Pachypytum diamond that I have is growing really well. And in fact, the baby that I got also did this. So I'm just curious to see what would happen 
who would they variegate or how are they gonna grow who knows but anyway this one now so crassula like this is really hard to say it's Lycopodioides, dioides, Lycopoda, oh my goodness. This is, don't, don't you have a short name? Crassula muscosa despera, okay. Lycopodioides, oh my goodness, variegated princess pine. I have a couple of strands, only about that long, that was given to me by a friend of mine. And it is slow growing, I kid you not, it's just so slow. So when I saw this again, I thought, yeah, it's about time I'll get one because they hardly come by, just quite rare. It's not available all the time. So when I do see it, well, probably someone else would have bought it before me, but then now the opportunity arose. We're in, I saw this one, so I thought, hang on, I drop one. See? Okay, we'll put it back there. So that's why I bought it. Anyway, this one is an Echeveria agavoidis species. I don't know what it is, but when I saw it, there's two plants. I mean, for $9 or $4.50, $4.50 a plant. Now, just going to compare the $4.50 here <laughs> and then the $4.50, two of them. So which one are you going to get? So this one, it's shiny and I do have a lot of agavoidis. But you're always, with a Gavoidis, you're always coming up with this new hybrids or I don't know how that works, where in the plant just mutates and changes. So that one is a soft leaf, we'll take that off. So anyway, this one is just in ordinary potting mixed with sand. So I need to transplant this one. And as far as buying succulents goes, this is one of the holy grail of succulents. To me... Well, first of all, it did not come with a label. So this cost me $9 from my local hardware store. And this plant did not have those red edges before. So after a couple of days with me, it started forming this red. But the look of it looks like a Romeo to me. So if I compare the two, so just to show you... The difference, so that one on the right is like a void. This is this could probably be a water lily or something like that, or could be a limer, who knows? And this one on the left is just whiter. It's gotta see if I turn it around. So this one is definitely more green, and that one is a lighter color. So anything that's lighter color, there's a tip again. It could possibly be a Romeo. So if not, it would be a uh, Romeo mutation which is probably a Sirius and Sirius are seriously beautiful as well so that is a bargain for nine dollars okay so I'm happy 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 days <laughs> so that's my um, what do you call this my lucky plant find when it comes to the succulent so now I think I only got two plants left this plant, I would consider it the second find of the day. I paid $30 for this plant. Okay, so this is Peperomia scandens. And this Peperomia scandens is just amazing. Look how big this is. Okay, this is like almost a meter long. Holy dooly, look at that. Oh my goodness. So, and a lot of them has got roots. So this plant, when they grow, I think they crawl on the ground as a ground cover. So that's why they grow roots. Look at that. Can you see the roots? See the roots? Okay. Look at that. Every, just about every node, every, I don't know, what do you call that? Section <laughs> has got a root growing even to the tip here. Look. To the tip, look, root. So that's about... I don't know, six, seven inches long already, and it's got a root. And these ones are all the same. Look at that, it's got a root. So it'll be really ideal to propagate and thicken up. So I've got a spot down here for it. So that's where I'm putting this one, and that's why I bought it. Because it's just, I mean, for $30, you can't go wrong with this. It's a huge plant. Look at that, it's really, 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 really really big plan so anyway that's a good buy for that price most of the ones I've seen online they're selling it much cheaper for like 
10 15 dollars but you only get like a couple of strands you don't get something like this thick so for even carrying uh, the plant alone for handling fee I would pay $30 to handle this plant just about so that is a good value a good value plant for the maturity of the plant because it is amazing it is just uh, so long already so anyway now let's get on to the last plant I nearly forgot to show you this this is a coffee jar see and it's got a lid and it's quite big so it's ideal pot and I got this for three dollars only because it's got a little chip on the edge there so see three dollars I still got the label as is three dollars it says so the 17th of the 12th is when they put this up and nobody bought it so not until I came along in January that I found this so anyway so this would make a beautiful succulent pot last but not the least when it comes to the plants this one is my find for the month I love 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 <laughs> this plant look how big the leaves are and apparently it can grow much bigger than that so this is Calathea obifolia also known as Jupertia obifolia they keep changing it oh my goodness and look at that gorgeous and I paid $39 or something like that for this plant anyway it's a gorgeous 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 plant and it's waterfall I love it I love it so I've been giving it lots of water since I got it I already watered it once and I spritz the top with spray spray it because they do like a sort of a humid environment apparently so I still have a couple of leaving calathea or jupertia that I haven't killed I already have those two for a couple of years so they're not really all that thick because I don't know how to look after them so the catalyst for me to be able to find out more how to look after my calathea is this obifolia just oh gorgeous gorgeous this is in a 170 millimeter pot so the pot's quite big see look at that so anyway so that is the last of our plant haul and before we go I'm just gonna show you because I do have a lot of plants and I do have to water a lot and I only have this two liter watering can this is tiny and look I even burned the tip of it can you see that so that way the spout would bend a little bit because it was straight up and then every time you have to water it's just so high and then you go like this I need it to go bend a little lower so it can get to the root of the matter so I'll be more direct watering instead of having it up in the air so anyway I went and bought this is actually not bought as well so it's just a gift voucher again so this is uh, the pot that was gifted to me or the watering can so this is the watering can that I sort of gifted myself it's not gifted because if it's a gift voucher did they yeah they get they I was gifted it so I wasn't really I didn't really buy it so this is a 10 liter one so if you have strong arms <laughs> like I do because it's quite heavy but you don't have to fill it up so this is a Toledo I am not sponsored by this this is a watering can 10 liters but it's just that I love the spout see look at that so I only filled up like halfway and then I've been watering my plants outside when I don't need to have my hose on so I go around with this one even inside here I've been using this to water my plants so instead of a two liter container like this that only can do a couple of plants then I have a much bigger six liters I only fill it up to about six liters so anyway guys that's all for our gifted plant haul so should I say plant haul and all sorts of things as well pots and whatever so anyway that's all for now and if okay you haven't got any of these plants you don't have to buy it I'm just saying I'm just showing you what I got I will be doing future videos of the condition of these plants or how I killed my plants so anyway or should I say 
how long did it take her to kill her plants so anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video bye